Hello. It is a rainy and dreary day uh, up here in New York City, uh, so I figured I would take some time to do a couple of videos to go along with some blog posts and GitHub samples that I've been working on, uh, all revolving around uh, Windows 10 development. So I did a video a couple of weeks back uh, kind of talking about the generalities of Windows and the new Universal App Platform and some of the stuff that I was going to cover, uh, one of which is the new split view um, for Windows 10. So in uh, your XAML controls, if, if you have Windows 10 installed, a technical preview of, of some build of some sort, uh, along with Visual Studio 2015, uh, you can get the Community Edition for free. Uh, if you have those things, uh, you may or may not have already started to play around with developing Windows applications for Windows 10. If you haven't, um, then the next time you do, you will notice that there is this new control called a split view. Now this is something that other platforms, Android and iOS, has, have had for a little while. Um, and basically what it is, it's a, and I'll show you an example, um, it's basically just a menu uh, that you can pop in and out from, from either side of your screen. You can do it left, right, I think you can do top and bottom as well. Um, but these are often, you might, you might have heard of these more commonly referred to as the hamburger menu or the hamburger button menu. Um, a couple of the, the things that you might have heard. But basically what the split view does by itself, by itself is it gives the developer in XAML the ability to create uh, basically from scratch. That's one of the differences here. But to be able to create that menu, menu pane that can go on the left, right, and I think top and bottom of your screen, and that menu can pop in and out um, with different options for the user. Again, typically referred to as a hamburger menu or a hamburger button menu. Uh, but again, the split view basically just gives you the bare bones that you would need to be able to create that. Then it's your responsibility to create everything with inside of that um, split view. So if you want a hamburger button, you have to create your own hamburger button. It doesn't come preloaded with a hamburger button, although that will be nice. Uh, but for one of the next two videos, we'll be working around the hamburger button and doing a hamburger button menu, so stay tuned for those. Um, but with this uh, split view, basically you have two different aspects of it. You have the split view pane, which is going to be the menu, and then you have the uh, content. And that content is going to be basically your, your typical page that you would have created in XAML uh, regardless of anything else. So that will be just kind of typical XAML. And so will your pane. It will just be customized uh, to look like a menu. Uh, so a couple of the properties, just to kind of mention a few uh, that might be worth being familiar with. There's an open pane length, um, so the, this is the width of your menu when it's open. So again, you can open and close it. You can have a length for when it's open, and then you can have um, a length for when it's closed also depending on the type of display mode you're going to choose. Uh, so display mode, jumping into that, there are four different display modes that you can choose from. Uh, inline, compact, compact overlay, and compact inline. So inline just means when the menu uh, pane is open, it pushes all of the content over. When it's closed, it goes back to its original location. Overlay just means that your menu lays on top of your content. It doesn't move anything over, it just lays on top. Uh, so compact overlay is the same as overlay, except for when you minimize it, you still have a little strip of the bar uh, there. So it doesn't disappear completely, you still have that little strip. Um, and then compact inline, same as inline, except for, again, when you minimize it, you have that kind of compact strip on the left. Um, a couple other properties, uh, just to mention, pane placement, again, uh, left and right, I think you can do, oh, um, currently limited to left and right, so maybe top and bottom are coming, but just where, wherever you want to put your menu. Um, and then another one that I'll use in the future is, is pane open, so you can uh, set whether or not your pane is open, your menu, uh, whatever. So let's take a look. Um, I've got a little sample that I built, and this will be a video that I'll do shortly, show how to build, the, build this. Um, I've got my debug uh, numbers up here, so ignore those. But basically, uh, this is a basic split view where this is um, my compact, let me see what I'm doing. So compact overlay, so notice I have this thin little um, menu with icons on the left, and I can set how, how wide that is when it's closed and then when it's open. So I've got the hamburger button at the top, the home button, or I, I just kind of picked three random ones just to have them up there. They don't really do anything. Uh, but basically when I open this menu, I'll see I have some text here that says what each button does. So again, you would probably do something better than just general button one, two, and three, uh, probably home, settings, stuff like that. 
Uh, but this is the this is the basics of what we're talking about, and then you could build that out to really look um, however you like and customize it and make it as nice and pretty as you want to. Uh, but those are the basics, and that that's what we're talking about with the split view. Uh, so that's just an intro, and then stay tuned. Going to do a couple of quick videos coming up on how to uh, do a hamburger button, and then how to incorporate that hamburger button into a uh, split view pane, where it, it really turns it into a hamburger menu, hamburger button menu. So cool. Hey guys, here to continue talking about the Windows 10 split view. I uh, just got finished doing an intro to the split view control a few minutes ago, so that video. I can post a link to uh, in the description here. Uh, but basically the split view is a new control added to the XAML set of controls for Windows development now uh, for Windows 10. And that split view is designed to be able to give you the option to add a menu on the left or right and I think eventually up uh, top and bottom of your application. Um, a menu that can uh, be kind of flexible, it can, it can pop in and out, it can get bigger and smaller uh, depending on the screen size and that's the key right for Windows 10 going across so many devices. You have to be able to, to, do, to design things that uh, adapt, that can be uh, controlled a little differently on phone versus a, a bigger desktop or something like that and this is all up to uh, the designer, the developer. So the split view is one of those things that gives us uh, a little bit more capability here. Uh, typically what we think of uh, with a split view, we think of the hamburger button menu. Uh, so we see that on some of the other platforms on mobile websites and such. Um, and so one thing to note here is that the split view does not give you a hamburger button uh, menu or a hamburger button um, by itself out of the box, right? A split view just gives you the bare bones to be able to create that menu, the pane they call it, that can pop in and out uh, and give you some added um, navigation buttons or settings and home buttons, stuff like that. Uh, so one of the things that I feel like has been kind of overlooked is how to actually create the hamburger button itself. Microsoft has talked a ton about how we now have the ability to create these hamburger button menus, but I've yet to kind of see a really uh, thorough but simple. I mean, the process is simple, but yet to really see a blog post or video really cover just how to do the hamburger button itself. Again, it's not hard, uh, but just haven't seen the documentation. So that's what I'm going to do here today. So I've got open a Visual Studio project, again, 2000, uh, 2015, so you'll need to be running that along with Windows 10. Um, and I'm just going to create a simple button here. Um, pretty straightforward and I'll close it out. So my button, I'm going to give it a name. I won't actually use this because this is going to be such a simple example, but I'm going to do hamburger button. And what I want to do here is we want to use the Sago font, which has a set of icons, and choose the hamburger icon uh, from that font as the basically the image, the icon for our button. And we can find that, I'll post this link as well, but this is a cheat sheet to all of the different icons that come in the Sago MDL2 assets, right? So there's all these different ones here. Um, I'm just gonna do a control F and find hamburger. And if I come down here, there's a hamburger menu um, icon here, and it's got this little code. So I'll show you what to do with that, but basically you wanna grab that, copy and paste it, and go back to the XAML and inside of our button we're going to say font family is um, and let's see make sure I get this right so go MDL2 assets so that's the font that we're using now the content is going to be that little code that we use so we just paste that right in there and uh, we actually should be good. Let me make sure that this is centered. So I'm just going to horizontal and vertical alignment set to center. And my visual editor here is kind of catching some weird errors. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run this and then we'll just see what it looks like inside of uh, a running application. And can't see anything right now. Let me go in and change the background of our grid to white and now if I run again we should be able to see our hamburger button on top. Alright so there it is. Again this is 
really, really simple. It's not complicated at all, but something that you're going to need to know how to do if you want to create a hamburger button menu is to be able to create the hamburger button itself. And it's something that I feel like has not been covered. Um, and again, you, you need it to be able to do all these things that we talk about. So that's it. That's it's, I mean, it's that simple. Uh, and then you can do the same thing for any other icon buttons as well. Just choose this to go font. Um, go to that cheat sheet that I showed you. The link is down below and then uh, copy one of those codes in as the content. So it's that easy. I uh, hope you guys get up and going uh, pretty quickly with the hamburger buttons.